What is up, y'all? Welcome back to the Debbie Royale YouTube channel. I am your host, Kevin Coleman, and we're back to talk about XFL, baby. We've been talking about XFL last two weeks ago. I think we did a quarterback episode. We are back to talk about the XFL running backs, what you can expect from these guys, who's the little sleepers in this. I There's a ton of old college football talent in these, in these uh, running back classes and these depth charts. So we're going to give you a full breakdown here on the channel. Hang around. All right, so let's dive into it. So we're going to talk about running backs, and I, and I, I, want, I want to preface this with a couple of things. One, I know these depth charts, they're up to date, and there's guys that sign at other places, the USFL, some of these other leagues, and, and so I, take it with a grain of salt. Some of these guys are going to be moving around a little bit, but I do think it's good to get a little preview, and I do want to, I want to say, like, this is a legitimate, like, fun XFL league with guys that we saw play in college that were legitimately good that just haven't gotten a shot in the NFL, right? Like, Puka Williams here is on the cover of this of the thumbnail. Like, these guys are really fun to watch, and I think it's fun to dive into these guys and just kind of give you a preview of what we can expect. And if you like college football and you're a fan of fantasy and these type of things, like, these are guys that we know a lot about, and I think this is going to be exciting to kind of dive in to see what they can do, right? So let's just start off. We're going to break down every team and every team does start. We're going to start off, obviously, with with our Arlington Renegades. And where does their depth chart kind of look like? So right now, based on the roster that we have had and kind of updated, I know Dexter Williams kind of out there. We'll see what happens there. But here are who they have. Demonte Tuggle. They have Keith Ford, Dexter Williams, and Kenneth Farrow. Now, Demonte Tuggle, uh, Tuggle, and we're going to do a player spotlight of every one of these guys. Um, or just a highlight of like the guy I want to really like kind of kind of go through. But uh, Demontre Tuggle, you know, he played in Mac. He played in Ohio um, last in 2021 at 804 yards. So he's looked okay. Keith Ford at the same time. He's a little bit of that older back. 2017 is the last time he played in college, 548 yards. I'm going to really highlight their play in college because a lot of these guys got a little bit of a sniff of the NFL, but not much, right? So when we're, when we're talking about them, okay, just to give you a heads up, that's where we're really talking about stats, unless noted otherwise. Uh, Kenneth Farrow, again, older back, 2015, he played for Houston. He, he played a little bit with San Diego Chargers, uh, but but he hasn't since 2016, but he hasn't played since then. But he was a pretty productive back, almost at 3,000 3, yards rushing. So you got to look, look out for Farrow. Now, the guy I want to kind of highlight is Dexter Williams. Now, Dexter is a pretty solid back. He had some pretty fun stories about him. There's his college career, uh, and, and he's been bouncing around a little bit. There is rumors that he signed with the USF fell though so just want to give you guys a heads up there i don't know necessarily what's going on with that because i it, it's just hard to find these things but overall you know he was a good runner and he, i played a little bit when we talk about the packers and where they're at like i think you should spotlight him for the renegades overall i, I think there's a very solid room if if dexter doesn't play it then yeah a little bit there but if he doesn't if dexter doesn't go Tuggle could get a little bit of run. Like, I know he's a little smaller back, but I think Tuggle can be that guy. And I think that's a fun, fun thing to see with this, Ar with this Arlington team. Now, let's go to the D.C. Defenders. Fun logo, as we talked about last in, on the last episode of this. I love their logo. Now, let's get into their depth chart. So first, Abram Smith, Rykel Armstead, Puka Williams, Artavius Price. I think they're one of the best running backs uh, brooms in the in not the country. I'm talking about college football and in the league. Like I love these guys and and just we're gonna highlight Aaron Smith here in a minute. So I'm gonna skip him. But when we're talking about Rykel Armstead, obviously. Thank God he's back from COVID. He had really bad COVID, and it kind of knocks him out of the league, basically, in 2020. Uh, he had 108 yards for the Jags. He's he's at Temple. He looked really good at Temple. Uh, he's an interesting player to kind of keep your eye on when we're talking about, like, what could he do? Because he just he kind of got screwed after he got COVID, um, and he looked like he was going to step into kind of a role with the Jaguars and just didn't do it. Puka Williams is the next guy, like small guy. I think they're going to use him a lot of different ways. 5'10", 170. The reason why they didn't, he didn't make it in the league is the 170. But at Kansas, he's look, he looked good, right? When we're talking about what he was able to do in 2018 and 2019, he had 1,000 yards rushing. He can catch the ball. Off the field stuff has always been a concern with Puka, but I like Puka. Like, I think this is the perfect league for him, right? We're thinking of just like, what can he do there? Our, um, our, you know, when we're thinking of price and what he's able to do, okay, running back, we'll see if he can really kind of step up. But let's highlight Abram Smith. Now, number one pick when we're thinking of what he is in this XFL league, 5'11", 221. At Baylor, he he was a converted linebacker his junior year. That's why he has no stats. Then he goes back to running back his senior year. He had 1,600 yards rushing and 12 touchdowns. And when you're thinking about him, like, I am surprised that he didn't stick you with the Saints. Like, he got drafted by the Saints, or he got I think he got signed by the Saints, and he just didn't stick there. But as a runner, man, he's a solid runner. 
when you're watching him play, like he he's one of my favorite kind of running backs to watch in just a pre-draft process, just how big he is in there. But I think he could really be a pretty good solid player in the XFL. Like he kind of fits that frame. He can be that that guy that's kind of carries the load. We saw that. And he was the first overall pick in the XFL offensive skill round. So they're obviously going to use him a lot. So I want to highlight him. I hope he kills it. And I hope that the NFL comes calling because I think he deserves it. I think he got a little bad rap last year. Now, next team, Houston Roughnecks. So we're going to get into Houston and talk about what, what they have on their, on their depth chart. So Trevor Allen, Adrian Killens, Max Borgie, Bryce Nelly. Now, when we get into some of these, Trevor Allen, you and I, uh, you know, when it, in 2019 he played there, he had 1,200 or 600 yards and 600 yards both, both seasons. He has 1,200 career rushing yards. Um, Adrian Killens out here. Uh, again, UCF, little smaller guy running back. 2019 is the last time he played. He had 2,400 yards, but he's a receiving threat too. And I think we know what Houston's going to do here. Like when we're looking at what they've been able to kind of do um, in their offense and just their draft, like when you're looking at their draft and what they've been able to do from the quarterback position, to the running back position, uh, you have to imagine like this offense is going to be pass catching backs out of the backfield. Like who they drafted, you can just kind of tell who that's going to be. And I think we're going to highlight this kid Max Borgie. Now let's talk about Max. Max was a guy that people were very high on coming out of Debbie a few years ago. So um, in 2019, he had 817 yards rushing, 11 touchdowns, and he had 86 catches, 597 yards and five touchdowns. He was going to the first round of Debbie drafts and fantasy drafts, and he looked really good, but he was in Mike Leach's offense. And then the next year he was banged up. And in 2021, he didn't do too bad. Like people kind of hated on him a little bit, but he actually did okay. 880 yards and 12 touchdowns, kind of in a similar offense. His pass catching went down a little bit. And we didn't see that kind of that, that breakaway that we really wanted. Right. And, but I do think like I am, I, if I had to sprinkle a little, like little money, like if I'm a degenerate, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of money out there. I'm like, Oh, who, who could be a highlight of this of these guys in this, in this backfield in, in XFL, I think Max could be with his pass catching. Like I wouldn't hate throwing a little bit of money on MVP, those type of things. Like I, I like this, this area. And I think that this offense is going to lean that way with the, with the, with the way they drafted just by the way they drafted. I think that's, that's part of it, but Max is a guy to watch, man. I, I I've always enjoyed him playing there. He's quick, explosive. Like I think he's going to really kill in this league. Next team, Orlando guardians. Let's look at their depth chart. So we got Jermaine Martin. Now, Jermaine Martin is a big kid, 5'10", 220. Uh, he was an excellent football player out there. Um, and when you're looking at it, he was an all-MEA selection, his first team selection in 2019. Uh, and that's the last time he played in college. And we're looking at his stats, just where he's at. Um, he he looked very, very solid, his rushing stats in 2021, like um, in terms of just being consistent. Like he only had 522 yards and four touchdowns. But in 2019, when he was like legitimately the starter and he got the usage that we'd like to see, I mean, he had over 1,400 yards rushing and 23 touchdowns. That's the kid that you really got to think about when we're talking about, hey, could he be that next guy, next level? Now, Devin Darrington is also there, a kid from Virginia, 5'9", 205, pretty good size, 237 yards last year as a senior. That hasn't done ton, a ton there, but player to keep an eye on right there. Um, and then Kelvin Taylor, Florida running back. When you're looking at him, a little older running back, right? So when we're thinking about where he's at, he's looked okay at times. But I think really the guy that you got to really see is Jermaine Martin. And I think what he was able to do in those years when he had those 12 to 1400 yards rushing and everything there, like Jermaine could be that guy. When we're looking at his stats, what he was able to put up, like his rushing ability. I think that he runs hard. He has good size. Like I think Orlando got a good one in Jermaine Martin. And I think that he's going to be the guy that leads that backfield if if he goes there and he plays, right? Now, next team, let's talk about San Antonio Ramos. Like, when you look at their depth chart, um, Jacques Patrick, again, Florida State kid. I don't know if you guys remember him, but I do. He had 748 yards in 2017 season. He looks really good. 1,700 yards rushing, 17 touchdowns for his career. So when we're thinking, okay, what can he do? Um, he's pretty pretty solid back. Uh, John Hillman, Boston College and Rutgers. Uh, he played a long time in, in college football, five years. Then he was at Rutgers. Uh, he kind of bounces around a little bit. Not someone really necessary to highlight. Calvin Turner, we're going to talk about him in our highlights, so we're going to skip that real quick. Kalen Bellagio, Arizona State, 6'3", 230. He's a big kid. He's he's going to be a little older, older prospect. He got drafted by the Miami Dolphins in the fourth round when you're looking at what he was able to do there. Um, but he looks pretty solid as a runner. So Kalen's a guy to keep your eye on just because he's that veteran. But the guy I want to highlight is Calvin Turner. And I think what they're going to use, they're going to use Calvin Turner all over the field. So, I, you know, when you're looking at the offense, you'd have to think that they're going to probably use Ballage, um, Bellage, excuse me, or Patrick 
in that kind of that really three down role. But Turner's going to be that guy that they're going to use all over the field. He's a very good pass catcher. 73 catches, 2021, 20, 876 receiving yards and four touchdowns. He is a athlete. And when you're looking at what probably XFL is going to do and what they're going to want to do, they want these athletic guys, put them out in space. And But he's got size. Like 5'11", 195 is not like something to sneeze at. He's not a small guy that's just getting like a gadget guy. He's a legit dude, a legit athlete. And I really love Calvin in this kind of league, and especially with his rushing style. Now, next one, St. Louis Battlehawks. We're going to go into their depth chart. They have a solid depth chart, man. Big boys. They know what they want to do. Mateo Durant, Letty Brown, Brian Hill, and Abdul Adams. Um, we're going to hire, um, highlight Mateo. But when you're looking at Letty, Letty's an interesting prospect. 5'11 kid from two, uh, from West Virginia, 216. He looked, He's really looked good. He had back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons in West Virginia. His biggest problem, and just from a Debbie fan point, like I've scouted him, fumbling he had a huge fumbling issue and it popped up in all the bulls that he played in it popped up in this kind of pre-draft workouts it popped up in those things like he's got to keep care of the ball if he does that we're talking about a legitimate athlete here okay now the guy that i do you know when we're thinking of like brian hill's been out there brian hill's been playing it seems like for a long time um kind of been bouncing around he's definitely the veteran of this group abdul adams as well when you're looking at what he's been able to do um, at Oklahoma and Syracuse. He played in the college football for six years. So he's an interesting piece. I think that he's a good solid piece there. Uh, but the guy that, you know, we're going to highlight is Mateo Brown, uh, Durant. Mateo Durant is, was very solid last year when we're talking about Duke. 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns. He looked good. I, you know, he had multiple, you know, touchdown games. He he really led that Duke team in a bad Duke team, not a good Duke team. They did not do very well, but he was one of their best players. And so when we're thinking of like, hey, who can kind of take that next step for him? I really do think it can be Mateo. Like, I really like Mateo in his offense and his offensive scheme and everything they have going on there. Um, and overall, I just am a big fan of Mateo. So keep an eye on Mateo. Like, just as a runner a prospect, I thought he had some Debbie ability. I thought he had some NFL kind of highlights there. And, and that's where you really got to look at with these guys. Now, see how Sea Dragons are next. We're going to go through their depth chart. Morgan Ellison, TJ Hammonds, Brendan Knox, and Scotty Phillips. Scotty Phillips an interesting piece, and so is TJ Hammonds. But I do want to highlight our guy, Brendan Knox, the herd, Marshall. He, he was a very good player. You know, when you're looking at what he's able to put up the last three years, um, when he was in college from 2018 to 2020, you know, 578 yards, 1,300 yards in 2019 year where he looked really good. And then 887 yards because he had less attempts in that, in that year just because of the COVID, uh, COVID season and how that kind of broke down. But Brendan is a very solid runner. Just watching him and Marshall, what he's been able to do there. Um, like he was always one of those guys that kind of stood out to me as he could probably do it, like in terms of what he was as a running back. Um, now, what will he do, be in the XFL? We don't know, but I do think that he could kind of take over this role. Like the players I'm spotlighting are the ones that I'm hoping that can be that starter, that starter role there. Now, last one on this team, Vegas Vipers. When we're looking at the depth chart, we got John Levitt, Matt Jones, DeAndre Torrey, and Rod Smith. I think this is an interesting running back room when we're looking at just overall what it looks like. I do want to highlight DeAndre Torrey, though. Like DeAndre Torrey was a pretty good runner in 2021. 1,200 yards rushing, 13 touchdowns. He had 12 catches, and he was just a very solid for that for that team and the mean, you know, mean green. And I think that when you're looking and projecting these guys and who could take over, like you're going to look at their college production, and you're going to see it. And Torrey was pretty good. Like when you're just looking overall at his production, at his overall play style, what he does. Obviously, we need to break down the schemes, look at how the schemes go. But overall, I really am excited about these running backs, these running backs class. Now, guys that I the the room that I think might be my favorite room when you're looking at it here, like I think Max Borgie, like I talked about, is one of my favorite players in this draft just because I think that, you know, he has that skill set. But my favorite running back room belongs to the D.C. defenders. They got Abram Smith, Ryko Armstead, Puka Williams. They are very, very stout up in that running back room and that depth. I think that they have one of the best running back rooms in the XFL right now. And they're a, they're, that running back room is what you want. Like if you're going to play fantasy, DFS, those type of things. I am high on those guys, and I think Abram Smith's going to do very well. So, appreciate you guys checking out the channel. Hit that like and subscribe button. Every little bit helps. Any like, it takes two seconds. Not even that, a second. Hit that like. Hit that sub button. Let us know what you think. Who do you who do you think is the best running back room in the XFL? I want to communicate with you. I want to create that kind of community on here. Who do you think? Let's, let's talk about these guys. Let's get into some dates in the comments below. So, I appreciate you guys. Until next time, I'll see you later.